make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear It's like $13 an hour. It isn't big money, you know, but they'll pay an hourly rate for so many hours a week for them to be there, or through a program called Caregiver Homes. And, and by the way, that, that through, if they're getting paid through the PCA, that's taxable money. They can also get paid through Caregiver Homes um, a fixed amount per week if they're living in the home with the elder. And that amount is non-taxable. It's not a big amount, but it's between seven and $14,000 a year, depending on how sick you are, right? but it's non-taxable to your, to your child. So once again, it may be the vehicle through which they can do this. <coughs> and once again, home care alternatives often will have a private pay component because all the things that they're giving you through the frail elder waiver or any of these other programs may still leave gaps in the services that you, that you feel that you need. If you feel that you need 24-7 care, there may be something else you're gonna to need to do. But you wanna be thinking about that stuff ahead of time. Next slide. Um, so we talked about private pay, we talked about mass health, then there is Medicare. There were really two pieces of the Medicare program that would be relevant to you if you are at home and you are frail. And I want to get to talk a little bit about the 60 day care plan, right? Which I did not know uh, existed until recently, so one of these wonderful nurses told me about it. You know, I've been doing this, you, know, you start thinking you're real smarty pants, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. Then you find out one of these and you're like, who knew? So, we'll talk about 60 day plans and then we're going to talk about hospitals. Yeah. Okay, so 60 day Medicare plans, um, they will pay for someone to come out to your home to provide a skilled need benefit. But there are two things that you have to be aware of. One is, in order to qualify, you must be housebound. So that does not mean that you can drive out for dinner or go get coffee in the morning and still be considered homebound. It means that you are too sick to leave your home and you need someone to come to you and take care of you. The other piece is there must be a skilled service. So what's a skilled service? Let's say you have a wound that needs to be dressed and you need a nurse to come out and do that. Medicare will allow that. Maybe you're weak and you need some strengthening. You might need a physical therapist or an occupational therapist to come out to your home. They will pay for that. The important pieces are the, they can stay in and assist you, but they have to be able to show that they're helping you get better. So that's why it's 60 days. Medicare gives you that allowance of time to show that you're making progress. If someone does not make progress and remains at their baseline, Medicare says, no, I'm not going to pay for this because you're not really helping them. If it gets to be at the end of 60 days and you've made some improvement but you still have a ways to go, as long as they can show that you are getting better, they'll let you at, to go a little longer with some help coming in. Um, but I just want to tell you quickly, when I was a VNA nurse, I had a gentleman who, who had a wound back and um, he was supposed to be home bound. He had a back that, um, it's a special piece of equipment that helps wounds heal. I was getting my coffee through Dunkin' Donuts and he was in front of me. So <laughs> I said, you know, you're not supposed to do that. And uh, he said, yeah, no, don't tell me. So always wear a disguise. <laughs> I let it slip that time, but then our, our secretary actually waitressed at an area restaurant, and she waited on him the following week. So we had to just charge him for service. Now, Deb, in, in order to, to, to get the 60-day, um, to qualify for the 60-day plan, though, do you have to have been discharged from a hospital? No. No. So that's what amazed me. I always thought that for Medicare benefits to kick in at home, they had to follow a discharge. No, they, you have to have something. Um, I fill out all of these forms. It's called a face to face encounter. So let's say you go to see your doctor, and your doctor says, I'm really concerned with how well you are, how much you're struggling with your walking. I'd like to have the, the VNA come out and do a home safety evaluation and offer you some physical therapy. They then say, Deb, will you take care of this? So I have to fill out forms for Medicare. It's called the face-to-face -face encounter. You either have to have been in a hospital within 30 days or seen your primary care physician or 60 days after the care started. 
So if we, if you see your doctor, I can fill out that form and get you the care that you need. Thank you very much. So, so there is that, and that's something that you need to know because if you are frail, then you may find yourself in that situation and you're just at home and you're weakening or your spouse is weakening and you just feel like, oh, this looks pretty serious, but you kind of don't know what to do. Well, I guess the, the, the answer is there may be something that you really can do. So you want to talk to your doctor, you want to call a VNA, you want to, because VNAs often make these referrals right to the doctor. Not too often. Not too often. Usually it's the docs. It's the docs that don't. Yeah. But you, but you want to realize that that's a benefit. The second piece that you need to, that, that you need to realize that, that is a Medicare benefit uh, is the palliative care or hospice benefit. And I asked Melissa to come in to kind of talk about that because it has been my experience, and by the way, it was true for me too, as well as for my clients, that nobody got this one at all. That, that, that I always thought of hospice, first of all, I always thought of hospice was a building where you went to die, right? It was like you're almost gonna die, and you go to this building where there's a happy place, you know, because you know, it's not the hospital, but you've got good medical things, you know, and drugs and things, and then you die. So that's kind of what I thought it was. Not, well, it wasn't, it isn't really that. Um, and I thought I could ask Melissa to kind of tell you, tell you some of the things that she told me about hospice. Melissa? Exactly, we just give Arthur the happy pills. <laughs> Um, you know, and that's why I'm here because hospice has a lot of myths to it, and uh, and and that's what my role is. I'm a social worker, and a lot of what I do is the outreach and, and breaking a lot of the myths. That also on the screen. Yeah, you can do it unless you're doing pop. Okay. Uh, There's a lot of great, oh, this is being great. It's so much. Uh, breaking the myths of hospice, and and um, you know some of the myths have to do with people thinking that hospice is a very short-term benefit. And a lot of people, the, the reason why we get this bad rep, in a sense, is that people wait until the very, very end of their life to call us for hospice. The average length of stay is only about seven days. And the only reason that is, is because people wait until they're seven days away from death to call us. The benefit period, the, 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 let's say the benefit is this. A doctor has to certify that most likely, if the disease follows its normal course, without aggressive treatment measures, the disease most likely, the patient will most likely pass within six months. That's what the benefit says. Medicare knows that the doctor doesn't have a crystal ball. Medicare knows that no one is a psychic. That's all it takes to qualify for hospice. So does anyone in this room feel like if that six month day comes, are we gonna kick the person off of hospice? A lot of people feel like that's what happens. And in reality is, if the person continues to qualify for hospice, what we do actually is look at the person every week and they have certification periods every 60 days. And as long as they still qualify, they'll continue to be in hospice. And we have had patients on hospice for two years. And that is something that people do not tend to know about. And yes, let me tell people, Arthur, about the graduation program we have on hospice. <laughs> we've, been doing, we've been doing this uh, series in different towns and and um, it's one of the things that we love to talk about because it's something that a lot of people don't know about. But um, our personal Evercare hospice, I can only talk about our own statistics, but our statistics are 25% or one in four of all of our hospice patients actually end up doing so well that they graduate or come off of our program, meaning that they don't qualify any longer so it doesn't mean you get your wings, which is no, why you kind no, of no. <laughs> They are called what we call a live discharge. <laughs> they do so well that they're no longer sick enough to qualify for our program. So one in four of our, of our patients come off of our services. And some of them, you know, do come back. But I will tell one quick little story. I, I have this lovely, lovely woman that uh, she's 98 years old. And she came to our program and she had about two weeks left to live. That's what they predicted without their crystal ball, of course. Had about two weeks left to live. 15 months later, she was a graduate. That was a year and a half ago. 
and she's still knitting an Afghan a week. She still says to me, when are you gals coming back to take care of me again? And of course I say to her, when you're not healthier than I am. <laughs> and uh, you know, she loved our program and we still go to visit her and her volunteers actually still follow. She, she lives in a facility, which is another myth actually, speaking of what Arthur had brought up where he said he used to think that hospice was a place where people go. Hospice is actually wherever you are. Hospice goes to you. There are some facilities which are called hospice houses where you can choose to live, but hospice can be in your private home, hospice can be in a nursing home, hospice can be in an assisted living or in a rest home, or in your daughter's house or wherever it is that you choose to live. So hospice is wherever you are. One of the quick things that I, I did want to say is hospice is a free entitled Medicare benefit. I wish we could change the name from hospice because hospice is the word that nobody wants to talk about. I wish that we could just say, hey, how would you like a free service? Would you like that? Because everyone would say, sure, bring it on. Um, it's, uh, it's not expensive because it's free. There's no co-pays. Any equipment that you would need related to your benefit is all covered. Any medications, any durable medical equipment, which we call DME, whether it's a hospital bed, a commode, a special low air loss mattress, a, a special wheelchair, anything like that, supplies, chuck pads, anything like that, anything related to the illness of which we're caring for is all covered free under the benefit. When I meet with families, and a big part of what I love about my job is meeting with families to tell them about the benefit. 